So I got some things from home. I got some, uh, these are papers. I got like uh, three papers there from the farm, a little bit of coriander and uh, some fresh, fresh tomatoes as well. They look so fresh. I also got some carrots here. They are also very, very fresh and very, very healthy. Yeah, nothing beats uh, something that comes from home. So I got the carrots. I also got some bananas as well. These bananas are so good. But these bananas, you can't bake with these bananas. These tender beans, two packs. Some uh, green peas. These are low quads. Low quads. Lots and lots of them. So here they are. They are very, very sweet. This is kefir. Inside here is kefir. I will transfer it into a jar. I also got some potatoes. Very, very healthy potatoes. Lots and lots of potatoes. These breads. <laughs> They're not available in Nairobi. So, if you know this bread, you know the sweetness of this bread compared to any other brand of bread. So, these two got them. And a sack of lots of greens, spinach, skuma wiki. I don't know what is there. Yeah, I got these ones. They are very fresh. These are from the farm. So, I got lots of skuma wiki and uh, some spinach. I went to my meat commission. I got some osubuko, my all-time favorite. I also got some sausages. This is beef macaron. So I got a pack of it. Matumbo, cow intestine. So I'll transfer the kefir to here. Those who don't know kefir, kefir is fermented milk. We do ferment it in a different way, but in, uh, the English name is uh, kefir. This is so good. When it's fermented, it acts as a probiotic, and I love it so much with ugali. Ugali, ugali. Maybe not twenty. It comes with a lot of these grains, the kefir grains. So if you know kefir out there, you know how important this milk, this kind of fermented milk is. So I'm going to cover this and I'll keep treating it with fresh milk, fresh milk from time to time. So I'll keep treating it with fresh milk from time to time. And this looks so, so good. Like, oh. I'm even thinking of making some ugali. So I'll put it aside. As for these bananas, I don't know. But I, th I think we'll eat them. I'll boil this. I'll boil this. I think I will have to soak this right now. For anything else. I will soak them so that I cook. I have pots but I don't think they are enough so I decided to add other new pots uh, so let me just unbox with you you can see the picture but I want to show you how they look like I love stainless steel so that is why I would always go for stainless steel and these I think they are new in the market so I decided to get a few pieces to help me uh, so that when I'm cooking I don't struggle with the pots so this is Edinburgh yeah, they are stainless, but from uh, Edinburgh. This is a whole set, but I got three pieces. There's an option of getting whichever pieces that you want. So I got uh, only three pieces because I wanted 
to add just a few i did not need much so i got this is the first one and i love this material over here because the other part the material is this one and it's it's really a uh, an hassle when you want to clean so i think this one is better and also it's heavy the same material with the other pots that I got. The difference is the handles. And this time I did not want the gold. Honestly, the gold rusts with the salty water. So I'm glad I got just uh, the aluminium one. So this is the lid. This is how the lid looks like. For the... This is another pot. No, not for that. For this, the small pot that I've shown you, this is the lid. So you... Uh, I just love those pots. This is a bit bigger. This can cook rice or stews. I love this. It's so beautiful. Like, look at that. How can you not love stainless steel? I love stainless steel. Anytime, any day, I would go for stainless steel. They don't come with any harm. So they're good to go. You can cook. Look, I just love the shape of it. And this material is, I think it's easier to clean. I'm yet to know how this material will react when it comes to heat. But in the meantime, these are the pots and I love them. They are so, so beautiful. I want to organize my space. Like I start with the bedroom. I just woke up and... Uh, and I did not make the bed in the morning, so I've decided I want to make the bed. Also check on the kids' room, see if it's tidy. You know, the kids' room is one of those places that actually set me to a uh, very hard fatigue. So I always make sure that instead of letting ignoring it, I check it from time to time to see what I can do. So I'll start with my bedroom. I hope you get to enjoy this video and if you do please give it a thumbs up also share it widely don't skip the ads because that is where we get our revenue from go ahead and vacuum the floors because definitely there must be dust that come in from the windows and also from the fabrics
with the kids bedroom i'll be changing the beddings and also wipe that bed because that bed when it accumulates dust you can see all the dust i don't want the kids to come up with flus because of the dust so i'll make sure that that room uh you i get to wipe it i also hope that you get motivated to always check on your kids room so that you can uh, lower the risk of getting flus <music>
See it in your eyes when we leave for the night. Way too many heartbreaks still on your mind. Let the flame burn down for a while. Let the frame blur out for a while. Stay in the moment. Stay in the moment with me. Give you a moment. Give you a moment with me. Spend all the roses. Spend all the roses with me. Just give you a moment. Stay in the moment with me. Now that schools are closed, I'm going to empty all the bags and run the laundry as well as their uniforms. I'm going to run all of them so that I can keep them until the schools open. I have now a lot of laundry to run because uh, the bed sheets that I did remove from uh, uh, this bedroom and also from my bedroom, I'll make sure that I run all the laundry so that I avoid all the pileup that I get whenever I'm doing laundry. And also the kids get to throw things like everywhere. Like the uniforms are not supposed to be there, but they decided to just pile them there. I'll organize that place, remove all uh, that is needed to be washed, put the clothes that are clean aside and make sure this place is all vacuumed. Since we use this sink uh, to wash our hands after eating, there's always a lot of food stains. So I also have to wipe it whenever I'm doing my general tidying up of the day. The bathroom and toilet area is never an exception whenever I'm doing small cleaning in my house. I always have to wipe the place where I do put the soap and also wipe the top of the toilet and wash the inside. I never wash the floors because whenever they shower they get to sweep the floors and whenever I do get to, to, to clean the entire house like deep cleaning on Wednesday, that is when I go deeper into cleaning the toilet. Since it's getting late, I'll start making dinner and I'll start by boiling the milk that I want to actually treat the fermented milk with and then put the other food to keep boiling as I prepare the ingredients.
For dinner, I want to make some matumbo, ugali, and greens. And I've added oil into my pan. I'm going to add in the chopped onions. And then I'll let them brown a little bit before I can in add in the spices. One thing about matumbo, matumbo is very delicate if you go extreme with spices. So I always try to limit my spices when it comes to matumbo. I only use uh, turmeric and curry powder for my matumbo. And even if I get to use these spices, I just use a pinch of them. I don't go uh, so much with over spicing. So I'll infuse this in oil as I always prepare my meat so that this... Uh, spices can uh, be absorbed into the onions and also into the oil as well and then i will add in raw chopped uh, tomatoes i prefer raw chopped tomatoes when it comes to matumbo because we need the acidity and to get the acidity we don't want to be steaming and losing that so i'll mix this well sprinkle some uh, salt from the from uh, the top of the tomatoes i won't be mixing after sprinkling the salt i'll cover this and then let uh, them cook down with the steam i will lower the heat so that they can soften and then i'll be mashing them down so that i can now uh, continue cooking the matumbo i love matumbo and as I always say, every part of the cow has its own taste. Every part of the cow has a way of you uh, using your spices. So always uh, go, go easy when it comes to spices when you're making your meat. You don't have to pour a lot of spices in your meat for you to enjoy your meal. Otherwise, some spices just uh, destroy the taste of any meat when you want to prepare them. Like when it comes to maybe beef or maybe matumbo, if you use a lot of turmeric, there is a different taste that comes in and we don't really want that. So after they've cooked, I mashed them down. As you can see, they are very soft. And then I've added now the matumbo. I will be mixing this well until the matumbo and the, now the sauce are well incorporated. After that, I'll be covering minus me uh, adding in the broth that we have there. I will cover this so that they get to absorb all the flavors from the tomatoes and everything. And after that, that is when we will be adding the, in the broth. But I will cover that for 10 minutes on low heat for them to cook nicely and get all the flavors before I can add in the broth. And I've used the same onion that I did I uh, used to boil the matumbo. I used it because it got all the flavors from like uh, the broth of the matumbo. So I've added that onion and that really enhances the flavors of that matumbo. So I'll mix this well after 10 minutes. Those are the results like the matumbo gets all the color from the turmeric and the curry powder and also gets the flavors from the tomatoes you don't want to be cooking your your meat and then you get the broth is on a different side and also the meat just comes out plain you just have to get the meat releasing all the flavors of everything that you've added so this uh, broth is so rich like it's so rich with everything and flavors so i'm adding that in i'm not adding any water nor adding any milk or anything in form of milk that is the only thing that i'm adding in here i'll cover this and then let it cook for like five to six minutes after that that is when i'll garnish and when it comes to matumbo i prefer using the green pepper for garnish you can garnish with coriander but trust me green pepper gives matumbo good flavors and after garnishing don't cover it just serve them as crunchy as they are because they when they are raw and crunchy they release good juices to the matumbo So at this point, I want to make ugali and my water is ready. To make my ugali, I will just add in some flour and then start the cooking. I know you understand the process of cooking ugali. If you're not Kenyan, this is just corn uh, cornmeal flour. This is I just milled my flour from a uh, whole corn. So that is what I'm using to make ugali. And ugali goes well with matumbo. There is no any other thing that you can use in serving your matumbo. Just go straight for ugali. I'm trying to find 
find your way Let's see you smiling Since we were stuck in LA Baby, come jump the rooftop and Come watch the skyline with me I appreciate each and every one of you that always comes back to watch my content. Everyone that appreciates and leaves a very kind comment on the comment section. I really appreciate uh, that. Thank you so much. And thank you for always returning back. And to my new subscribers, thank you for being here and always welcome. So we've come to the end of the video. I hope you got to like this video. Give it a thumbs up as I said and also get to share it widely. Until next time. Bye guys. Stay.